Death Valley Days, where Western history comes alive. I wonder how many of you folks have heard of Edward Fitzgerald Beale. Not many, unless you're historians of the West. And yet, you know, he was one of the greatest pioneers who helped open up our Western Empire. He was the grandson of Thomas Truxton, who captained the Constellation, the oldest ship in our Navy. Ned Beale graduated from the Naval Academy in the class of 1842. He served with distinction during the Mexican War. And in March of 1848, he was on shore duty in Monterey. And it's there, Monterey, 1848, that the curtain goes up on our story. I call it California Gold Rush in Reverse. The news of the discovery of gold has just leaked out. And Lieutenant Beale, like everyone else in this coastal town, is agog with excitement as he meets Reverend Colton and Lieutenant Losher of the Army. Well, Lieutenant, Reverend Colton. Right. Well, what do you think of the news? Well, I'm thinking I might as well close my church. By Sunday, the whole congregation will be on its way to the digging. <laughs> the Army is deserting right and left, I understand. And I hear all naval vessels are ordered offshore, incommunicado, to keep the crews from jumping ship. Wait till the news reaches the east. We'll have a rush such as the world has never seen. The Army will carry dispatches and exhibits to Washington at the earliest opportunity. The Army? Why not the Navy? <laughs> because the Army always gets there first. I hope to have the honor of being the official messenger. What a coincidence. So do I. You mean the Navy has already secured samples of the gold? Oh, hasn't the Army... Oh, gentlemen, gentlemen, you're both good poker players. But I happen to know that nobody has possession of gold in any quantity yet. Why, it's just beginning to trickle down here to the coast. You, you see? see? There's some on exhibit down at the customs house. Customs house? But it's not for sale. My pay's all spent anyway. But if I had any money left, Lieutenant, I'd make you a little bet that the Navy will carry the first gold to Washington from California. I'd like to take him up on that. What's his name? Ned Beale. B-E-A-L? B-E-A-L-E. -E. Distinguished himself during the war by getting through the enemy lines and bringing aid to General Kearney. Oh, yes. I seem to remember. And in consequence, was selected by Commodore Stockton to carry dispatches from California to the Navy Department last year. So he really knows his stuff. He ought to. He was accompanied by Kit Carson. Thanks for tipping me off, Reverend. The sooner the Army gets hold of some gold, the better. I'll recommend to the Colonel that a requisition be put through at once. trying to figure out the quickest route to Washington. The Army's got the jump on you, Ned. What do you mean? They've appropriated $3,000 for the purchase of gold samples. The Navy can certainly match that. I'll go to Commodore Jones. I've already been. You? Yes, don't forget I was a Navy chaplain before I became alcalde here. Well, what did the Commodore say? He can't find any authority in the regulations to purchase a specimen of gold. Confound the regulations. This is an event of historic importance. News that will electrify the nation. And he's going to let the Army have the honor of delivering it? Well, they haven't actually bought the gold yet. But they will. Miners are turning up here in Monterey every day now with nuggets and dust for sale. I know. Sometimes I wish I could grab a pick and get up to the diggings myself. I've thought of that. It would take too long. Hang it all, there must be some way to get hold of some. Short of robbery. <laughs> I don't know how. I can just see the grins on those Army faces now. Well, we'll just have to swallow our medicine, I'm afraid. Reverend, you've hit it. That's the answer. What? I'll swap it for gold. It's worth more in the market today, grain for grain. I've seen it quoted. What, man? What? Something Kit Carson taught me never to be without. Quinine. One more ounce and you'll have your medicine. 
of these blasted chills and fever. Three thousand dollars worth of gold. Oh, and here's your quinine. One hundred grains. Mister, it's worth ten times that much. Oh, Reverend Colton. I was just coming to say goodbye. And I was looking for you, too. I had to pick up my dispatches and the Commodore's blessing. Now all I need is your prayers for good weather from here down to Panama. Ned, there, I'll cross the isthmus and... Reverend, what's wrong? Lieutenant Lozier's already shoved off. When? How? Night before last, by schooner. I just found out about it today. That gives him only two days' head start. We might still be able to overtake him. The Maribel has a good skipper. Had a good skipper. What do you mean? Your ship's not sailing, Ned. The captain and crew have deserted her. The gold mines. I can't believe it. Best I could do is get you passage on a bark that's sailing at the end of the week. We hope. In that case, I'll map a different course. The bark at La Paz and take a shortcut across Mexico. Why, that's a thousand miles. It's the only way I can possibly make up for lost time. The Navy is going to deliver the first gold from California. <laughs> this gold is from Alta California? Yes. And don't let any of it stick to your fingers. I'm taking it to Washington PDQ. PDQ? That means I'm in a whale of a hurry. I want to charter a boat to take me down the coast to San Blanc. Well, someone here in Masatlan must have a boat. I Pepe Sanchez on a Goleta Pequena. Yes. Good. A Goleta Pequena, she is... A small schooner, I know. Ah, the senor speaks very good Spanish. And I also know what boats are worth, so let's not waste time bickering. Oh, I'm a very reasonable man to do business with. And I will take very good care of you. Then you're sure, Governor, that no American Army officer has passed through San Blas for the interior. Nobody but yourself would be so reckless, Lieutenant. That means that Locher's crossing the isthmus at Panama. You should do the same, amigo. This way is suicide. And yet you provide me with horses and a guide, for which I am deeply grateful. I haven't dared tell him the whole truth. He thinks you are going only as far as Guadalajara. Don't you think I can pass for a Mexican? The bandits who infest the roads will murder any traveler, regardless, for his goal. I'm well armed. With the rainy season just starting, the roads will be impassable. I appreciate all your warnings, Governor. But my mind's made up. I'll make Veracruz. Veracruz? Veracruz? Veracruz, he lay on the Gulf of the Mexico. One thousand miles away. That's right. Over here. El Patron, is a Guadalajara. Well, that's on the way. If you'll stand aside, I'll mark the route for you. Our first stop, Tepic. Next stop, Guadalajara. Capital, Mexico City. And finally, Veracruz. Tobias, are you ready? Si, senor. I am ready. We 
Better to find shelter. Nothing's gonna stop us. Keep going. copies of the dispatchers entrusted to him. Oh. When we get to Tepic, I'll mail them to the American minister in Mexico City. And then we turn back to San Blas? Certainly not. We keep going. But, senor, all along the way, there are bands of Lodranes, cutthroats, robbers. That's why I'm making sure one set of dispatchers is safe. All right, saddle up. could be in Washington when this reaches them. Well, come along, sir. <laughs> Thanks. I'll content myself with sending dispatches by you. I shall be happy to carry them, sir. Give us a few days to draw them up. A few days? Mr. Clifford, every moment I stand here, Lieutenant Lusher of the United States Army Engineers is hightailing it, he is hastening toward Washington to beat the Navy delivering the first gold. You could do with some rest anyhow, my boy. A few hours at most, sir. After eight days hard riding? Pardon my saying so. You could do with a bath and a shave. I've had a good many close ones in the past weeks. Sir. And uh, I fear you'll have some more ahead of you. The road between Mexico City and Veracruz is more dangerous than usual since Pareto's army was disbanded. Don't let my guide hear that. He's had about all he can take, poor fellow. You'll be our guest here at the legation, Lieutenant. Thank you, sir. And Mr. Beale, as a member of the diplomatic family, I must be strictly impartial. But may I say confidentially, I hope the Navy gets there first. Abajo! Por Dios.
Lance. We made it. This is Veracruz. Out there lies the Gulf of Mexico. And beyond it, the United States of America and Washington. Tonight, you'll sleep in a bed with a roof over your head. You'll drink tequila with your dinner. What are you doing? Tobias, are you crazy? We're in Veracruz. We're safe. <laughs> Hours. Skirmishes with bandits all along the way. All the way from where? San Blas. San Blas? Two Mexicanos alone? I'm not Mexican, senor. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Lieutenant Beale of the United States Navy. Oh, about the guide. You'll take care of the poor fellow. I have made arrangements to have him sent back home under guard. You'll be all right, Lieutenant. I hope so. I feel personally responsible. You are out now on the next leg of your journey. Sailing with the tide aboard the sloop of war, Germantown. And where will that land you? Mobile, Alabama. Vaya con Dios, Lieutenant. Thank you. This is certainly a mighty proud day for Mobile, Lieutenant, seeing the first gold from California. It's probably landed in New Orleans. Who? The Army messenger, Lieutenant Losher. Oh, I'm sure his gold isn't nearly as pretty as yours. Did Mama tell you we're giving a banquet in your honor at Cypress Grove? That's our plantation. What? I've invited all the first family. I'm sorry, ma'am, but I'll be leaving in the morning. Tomorrow? Oh, no. If there's a seat on the stage. There is, sir. I have arranged it. Uh, permit me to introduce myself. Henry Foote, the senator from Mississippi. I have taken it upon myself the honor of escorting you to Washington personally. Thank you, Senator. <laughs> How did you find out about this? Express messenger wrote in this morning. Broke the news. Lieutenant Losher, Army Engineers. No, regular mail carrier. Got a wind of it in Richmond where you stopped. Then I am the first. Gentlemen, three cheers for Lieutenant Beale. No, three cheers for the Navy. of the United States Senate. It is my privilege and honor to present to you the young man who, at the risk of his life, has brought to the nation's capital the first gold from our far-flung Western Empire, Lieutenant Edward Fitzgerald Bee. I can't think of any further honors to be accorded you in Washington. Good. Because I'd like to go home now to Chester, Pennsylvania, see my mother.
How proud your father would have been, Ned, and your grandfather, Commodore Truxton. Say nothing of the neighbors. The man of the hour. Now you're making fun of me, Mary. Oh, no. That's what they're all calling you. Do you know that he even received a telegram over the new wire to New York? And all these letters which he hasn't opened yet. Uh, this one from Philadelphia is marked urgent. P.T. Barnum. Not the Mr. Barnum. Of Barnum's Museum? None other. He's heard about this lump of gold, as he calls it. And as I am always anxious to procure novelties... Novelties, indeed. For public gratification, I should be glad to purchase the lump at its valuation for exhibition purposes. Your obedient servant, P.T. Barnum. Are you going to do it? Have you the right to dispose of it? Oh, certainly. I bought it with my own quinine. Think of the thrill it would give people. The first gold from California. I've already presented the government with over half of what I brought. That's on exhibit in the patent office. This would be a personal honor. I'm tired of honors, Mother. I didn't make that trip for my own glory. By the way, any news of Lieutenant Losher? No, none that I've heard. But I'll find out when I go back to Washington. You could loan Mr. Barnum this gold if you don't want to sell it. No, I'm keeping it. I happen to feel very sentimental about this gold. I got my orders in Washington, Mary. I'm to report back to California. Well, you'll have plenty of company. The gold rush is really underway. What are you going to do with the rest of your gold? Oh, I had it made into a ring in Washington. Would you like to see it? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's beautiful. Think of having a ring made from California's first gold. Your mother will love it. Oh, it's not for my mother. It's for my future wife. Oh? I told you I felt sentimental about this gold. I want my girl to have it. Will you? Will I what? Will you be my wife and go west with me? Oh, Ned. I wanted you to say it. Then you will? Yes. Oh, Mary. My ring. The ring? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. The ring. There's only one ring in the world like it. They did the first California go. Now, for the benefit of any of you who might have been rooting for the Army, let me say that Lieutenant Losher ran into bad weather, couldn't land at Panama, and was carried clear down to Peru. Finally, however, he arrived in Washington months after Lieutenant Beale. But the samples that he brought with him were officially examined by the U.S. Mint and settled forever any doubt about there being gold in California. There was gold in California.